So hello everybody and welcome to Remote Cubed Online. Um, so first up, we're going to have a little bit of an introduction to uh, those of us that are here. Um, so my name is Lauren, I work at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory um, and I will be overseeing this whole session. Um, next, I'm going to hand over to Shin and Shin will tell you a little bit about uh, what he does. Hi, um, my name is Shin Ran Liu. Uh, I work at the University of Edinburgh in the particle physics group. And uh, I spend my daytime looking for uh, on rare event particles uh, and also particles like dark matter. And uh, I, I use my spare time to build robots uh, and do outreach. So yeah, that's what I do. Fab. And now we will hand over to Alex, who will tell you a little bit about what he gets up to. Hi there. Uh, my name is Alex Murphy. Uh, I'm professor of nuclear and particle astrophysics at the University of Edinburgh, which sounds very grand. Um, what I do is I sort of lead the group's uh, research into direct searches for dark matter. And for that, we have to use the underground laboratory at Bulby. Um, I'm also uh, working together with Shin on this um, remote sensing project. Uh, basically, it's an excuse to have fun building robots. And then also I occasionally travel around the world to low energy particle accelerators to explore the uh, nuclear physics that um, is involved in stars when they explode. Um, so I think my role today is to try and answer any scientific questions that you may have. Uh, I'll do my best. Thank you. Amazing. And finally, we will hand it over to Emma, who will tell us uh, a little bit about herself and then also um, will share some of the work that Bulby uh, gets up to. So, Emma. Thanks, Lauren. Um, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Emma Meehan and I'm the Senior Science Technician at Bulby Underground Laboratory. Um, you can see a little bit of the mine behind me in the picture. Um, and I'm going to share with you a few slides and some little videos and such like to give you lots of facts about Bulby and what we do there um, and just give you a little bit of a feeling about um, what we've got going on. So if you just bear with me, I will share my screen. Okay. So um, some of you may know a little bit about Bulby already and some of you don't and that's fine, but um, hopefully we'll be able to shed a little bit of light on, on what goes on there today. So the mine itself is um, owned and operated by Israeli Chemical Limited UK. Um, it's the UK's deepest operating mine and its purpose is to produce a fertilizer from a rock that's called polyhalite. Um, it used to be a potash mine, so the rock was potash, um, but that they've finished with that now, polyhalite is the new mineral. Um, the mine itself is 1.1 kilometre deep at pit bottom. It has two shafts. One shaft is for people and one shaft is to get the rock out. The first shaft was sunk in 1968, so this is a very old mine. Um, it takes seven minutes to get underground in the cage, which is what we call the lift. The rock salt layer that we spend most of our time in is 230 million year old. And it's actually an ancient sea called the Zechstein Sea that evaporated a very long time ago. And um, the mine itself is very big. It is very old. So it's 10 kilometers end to end. That's north to south um, and five kilometers wide at its widest point. The deepest part of the mine in the south is 1.4 kilometers. And the shallowest part under the sea is about 800 meters because the, the um, salt seam where the potash is above it and the polyhalite is below it, um, is not completely flat. It does get shallower the further north you go. Um, <coughs> so just a little idea of what it's like in the mine. It's very dark and very deep. And this machine is called a heli miner that they use to cut the rock and get all the product out. It's not a great picture. Unfortunately, I don't have a fantastic picture. Uh, once the rock's out and processed, it then goes by train to the port at Teesport where it gets shipped all over the world. Um, when you go underground, if you join us in our little science team, it, it's a little bit different to a normal laboratory. So we need to wear a whole load of protective equipment, starting off with a hard hat. Uh, we wear bright orange high vis, safety boots, the spats, that those are shin protectors that we have to wear. Then we have ear defenders attached to the hat. 
um, an equipment belt that we have to wear, which carries something called a self rescuer, which is what helps us breathe in case there were a fire. Then we have a lamp, which obviously helps us see, and safety glasses. So <coughs> I'm going to show you a, a video of um, the journey underground. It's just, it's a very short video. It does have some very strange sounds because it's sped up. Um, but hopefully this will work. Okay. Okay, so that's how, how we get underground. Um, and as you can see, it takes seven minutes. And once we get to the lab, which you just saw very briefly there, um, the whole lab itself has five main parts, which I'm gonna tell you a little bit about. Uh, the outside experimentation area, I'm gonna talk about in a moment, the services area, main hall, bugs lab, and then the large experimental cavern. Those are the main parts of the mine at the moment, although we are expanding. <laughs> but firstly, one of the things that people always ask us is why build a lab underground anyway? Okay, right, so why is the lab in a mine? The radiation from space cosmic rays is what, what we call, we call it muons. It's pretty harmless to us. And most of the time, some of the cosmic rays, some of the radiation does give us sunburn, but generally it's not harmful. As you can see, all of that rock really, really helps stop those cosmic rays from getting to us. Oh, it says here is for every one million cosmic ray events on the surface, only one reaches us underground. So I'll stop that there because we don't need to see the rest of that. Okay, so that kind of gives you a little bit of a, an understanding of why we decided to build the lab underground. Um, but then what do we need to run a lab underground? So the services, this is the first part of the lab that we come to. Um, and you need everything that you need to run a laboratory on the surface, but everything that we have underground has to come down the shafts that we came down in. So the electricity, we have special lines that run underground to power the lab. We need water, <coughs> which we have to carry with us or um, take down in, um, in big bottles like water drinkers. Um, we have water coolers in the lab. We do have some running water, um, but it's not safe for drinking. We have a gas monitoring system to make sure that we're being safe um, from the gases that can be present in the mine sometimes and some gases that we have in the lab. We need internet, air filtration, air conditioning because the lab, uh, the mine is sorry, is very warm. It's naturally the rock temperature is around 30 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we air condition the lab down to about 21. We have environmental monitoring because it's really important for the experiments to be able to understand the conditions that the lab has. And we have a kitchen, which is one of the most important. And we have a toilet, which is the UK's deepest flushing toilet. 
<coughs> the outside experiment area is where we have lots of different projects. It gives uh, researchers access to the mine itself, to the rock and, and the interest in salt and all the things that we have going on there. So these are just some of the projects that we run out there. Um, I can tell you more about these and there's certainly more information online if you want to find out. But the mine our project looks at um, sharing technology between space technology groups and the mine. We use robotics and um, drones, as you can see in this picture. We do geology studies. We have a project called Resource, which is um, working and um, looking at energy storage. Pac-Man is an um, environmental monitoring thing, looking at sending environmental monitoring equipment to Mars. Uh, we do astrobiology studies, geomicrobiology studies, life in extreme environments, and we have a Mars yard where we practice um, with Mars rovers and um, training astronauts and all kinds of other really awesome stuff. Uh, these are some of the pictures of the outside experiment area. So we provide a brine pool for sampling. This is um, for uh, scientists to understand how life can exist in very, very salty environments and also to test some of their equipment that potentially would be going to Mars or other areas in space. <coughs> and we also run uh, these drone tests. There's some sound on this video, so yeah. sorry about that. But, um, you may be able to see small drone. The purpose of running tests like this is for scientists to explore how they can use their technology um, not only in um, helping humanity get to places where it's not easy for you humans to be, so that's not just space, but other areas underground, but also we work in collaboration with the mine to make sure, uh, to see if the, you know, there's any technology that we can help um, to make them safe. Okay, so finally then, uh, I'm just gonna have to do a, a, a screen swap again. So, uh, yeah, so all of the experiments down down one side of the lab, we have the main walkway, the outside experimentation area services down there. Um, and then we have uh, this here is a, a dark matter detector called Cygnus. It's inside a, a, a big box because it's shielded. Even though we're underground, we need to shield from other kinds of radiation that, that does exist, norm radiation, neutrons. Um, and so this has a water shielding. Um, <clears throat> to run an experiment like this takes lots of electronics um, and gas support systems and such like as you can see here. And then um, moving on up, what we have is um, we call it all of the shields that we use underground. Most of them are made from lead and copper, as you can see this one here, and, and we call them castles. And this castle is housing some germanium detectors for AWE at the moment. They're looking at air filters. Um, and then this castle is actually an old Zeppelin III castle. So Zeppelin III was a dark matter detector that was at Bobby, um, but is now uh, finished. And so um, this castle, when it's fully built, is twice the size and weighs over 70 tonnes. It's all lead inside, the, inside there. And um, right now we use this as a multi-purpose castle, so it's housing an experiment that's looking at the half-life of carbon-14. It previously looked at how the experiment that was looking at how bacteria co-op in low background radiation <clears throat> rather than surface radiation to see if maybe life needs a little bit of radiation to be able to survive. And then we have various experiments here looking at um, photomultiply tubes, which are kind of like reverse light bulbs, um, in that light goes in and um, energy comes out, uh, gives us a signal that we can read. And that's a, a, a component that's used a lot in um, physics detectors and particle detectors. Um, and so this whole area, was, this little area with all the dust bins and this is, this is getting ready for our next big project, which is called AIT. Um, and then we're moving on. This is what the LEC, the Large Experimental Cavern. And this part of the lab is seven metres high. 
and six meters wide so it's very large compared to the rest of the mine the mine normally the tunnels are around about four meters high so this gives a, a very large space for us to house bigger detectors um, <coughs> we don't have a detector in here at the moment um, but we so we're using this to test for the AIT but we're going to be using this to build big components um, for the AIT experiment which is going to be in an even bigger cavern um, which is going to be 25 meters cubed so if you can imagine this is seven meters building something that's uh, 25 meters cubed is going to be um, huge and then what you can see here on the screen now this is uh, again part of the Zeppelin project this is um, the Zeppelin 2 container or outer cryostat and so this just gives you a little brief look at what the lab looks like it's a clean room so it's class 10,000 clean room and when we're working in here we have to wear extra uh, different protective equipment than, than we had and you can just see there are some people in here and so we wear orange hard hats and these white coveralls um, different boots or boot covers um, and so a class 10,000 clean room in this one and then I'm going to jump out of this and go into the other part of the lab hopefully let me know if this works please Lauren I think it's working fantastic uh, so this is the Bugs Lab. It's Bulby Underground Germanium Screening Facility. Um, and what we have in here is a whole bunch of detectors. These are all particle detectors called germanium detectors. And they look at gamma energy, so a kind of radiation that comes from materials, comes from everything. But we use this mainly for material screening, looking at if you're going to build a dark matter detector, you want to use very clean components, um, radio clean of radiation mostly um, and so we screen them all in here and then we can advise the people who build detectors on the best components to use um, and just generally help build better better detectors um, as well as that in the corner we have what's called an alpha counter and so this guy looks at alpha radiation rather than gamma radiation coming from the surface of materials all of this all of what we do is called low background science the whole point is trying to keep radiation at bay as much as possible we can never get rid of all radiation but we do our best to keep it as low as possible so um, when you have an underground lab you put your detectors inside lead and copper castles to try and shield them from radiation we then flush these castles with nitrogen to try and keep the air that's going in there as free from radiation as possible and then when you want to build a new one, you want to make sure the parts you're building it with are as free from radiation as possible. And that's, it. that's exactly what this lab is trying to do all the time. Um, <clears throat> but also once you've got your parts that you're going to build your detector with, um, you, want, you don't want radiation to get on there in, in dirt or dust and such like. And so that's why we look at this alpha counter. It helps us understand what the surface contamination is and how best to clean that off before we even build the detectors. Um, and so this lab is um, expanding now. We're getting some more germanium detectors that are coming with some more alpha counters and we're going to be um, uh, much, much bigger and, and offer a much more intense service in the future. Um, so pretty much that's as, as much as I can show you today about the lab. Unfortunately, we can't be underground at the moment in, in real life. It's kind of funny how looking at this makes me miss it. Um, but if you have any questions about the lab, please feel free to ask. Also, there are online resources that you can get lots of facts and figures and such like. Um, but I think I'm going to hand you over to Lauren now. Thank you very much. Amazing. I will... Fab, I'll come back. Hello. Um, thank you very much, Emma. So uh, that was a little bit of an overview of what goes on at Bulby. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Shin, who is going to explain uh, a little bit more about the challenges. Over to you, Shin. Thanks, Lauren. And thank you, Emma, for that amazing introduction to Bulby. Um, so now it's over to you, viewers and participants. Uh, you've just seen that uh, as hunters of the invisible, which is what I like to call myself, um, some scientists have to travel to some of the most uh, remarkable places uh, around the world and we work in some very uh, interesting remote locations uh, such as Bobby, the tunnel behind me. Um, so 
yeah, so one of, there's no, one of the most remarkable places I've ever been to is the Bowlby Underground Lab, which you just heard Emma talk about. So the mission this week uh, is for you to do some research and create a quiz about Bowlby uh, so that you can share the amazing facts you found out with your friends via a quiz. So the idea is that um, it can be as many questions you like, uh, from five to 10 questions to 100 questions, so you find out that many uh, awesome facts. Um, you can try to make it, uh, you know, cr get creative, uh, make your a quiz and share it, and uh, you can add a timer to your quiz so that uh, you, can, you can have a countdown timer, so you can give your friends only 10 seconds, 15 seconds to answer a question. Uh, you can add a counter to let them know how many they got right out of uh, 10, 20 questions. And uh, yeah, but the, get creative. And we recommend you, so the, the idea is that you create the quiz using a programming language called Scratch, which is a visual block programming language, which you can find online. So the idea is that um, all, the, all the programs are in blocks and you can drag them and program them together and create your quiz. And uh, once that's done, bring it back next Monday at this time and share it with us and uh, show off your amazing quizzes. And we'll see how many uh, Emma can get correct. Um, and yeah, so once that's done, we will share the next challenge. So the idea is that we want to bring you a new challenge every week. Uh, so tune back in at the same time every Monday and uh, we'll see everybody's amazing quizzes and uh, hear what the next challenge is. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Shin. Um, I think that is all for now. So thank you all very much for listening. Does anyone have any questions? If you do, please pop them in the Q&A. Okay, so thank you all very, very much for listening. Um, if you would just like to leave this meeting um, and we will see you all next week and we'll send you a link um, to all of the things for next week. Thank you. Bye.